and let us all that we can to build a better future. Okay. Uh, this video is from Case Study QB, and this is going to be a collage video uh, segment on not only Indian workers, union dock workers refusing to remove uh, weaponized cargo bound for Israel, but we're also going to see how uh, good old Congressman, Congressman Fleshman, Fleshman, Chuck Fleshman, how he says he wants to basically say goodbye to Palestine. So we all know what's happening in Palestine. There is a genocide taking place there. There are people who are being dis uh, displaced, people who are starving, people who are being shot at. There is a treasure trove of crimes happening there. And the people of Gaza are left to fend for themselves. And look, uh, as it stands right now, we're getting close to the death count of being 40,000 confirmed. We're going to get to 50,000. Hell, we're probably going to get to 100,000 dead Palestinian men, women, children. Hey, hey, oh, see. Hey, hey, oh, see. Or wait, how about Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Sanders or Nancy, Nancy Pelosi? Would you call this a genocide then if it got to 100K? 100K dead men, women, and children in Gaza? Would, would, it, would it count as a genocide then? So we got this video from Case Study QB. Um, these are real. This is a tragedy. And yet AOC... Bernie Sanders, the Democrats, refuse to call this what this is. Tiny limbs, bones protruding. The constant sound of crying from children now facing starvation in Gaza. In this overrun hospital ward, anxious mothers watch on as doctors provide whatever care they still can. But for some, there is nothing more to be done. Three-year-old Mila, who had been suffering from acute malnutrition, now another victim of this merciless war. She was healthy. There was nothing wrong with her before, Mila's mother says. Then suddenly, everything dropped. She wasn't eating anything. We had no milk, no eggs, nothing. She used to eat eggs every day before the war. But now we have nothing. Across Gaza, too many are feeling the pain of this deepening hunger crisis. Small children. And yet when food is delivered, the people get shot at. Now, the, the IDF has said, oh, people are acting crazy. Well, listen, when you starve people for months on end, you know, when people are deprived of the basic necessities to get through life, of course, everyone's going to be uh, wanting to get food right away because they're probably the only ones strong enough to carry the food to those who are weak in their family. And they want to do everything they can so that their loved ones can be strong again, so that their loved ones can be healthy again. And here we are, the world's richest country in the world. You want to know what we're delivering for food, by the way? We're delivering old MREs. You, you know that aid package? You know that aid package that America dropped, right? Well, listen, if you served in the military, you know what the meals ready to eat are, okay? I I I I I am glad I never have to touch an MRE again. Just 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 trust me when I say it. It's it it is it is of the last resort that you go to it. The last resort. This is exactly what they gave us survivors of Katrina um as aid. That's what the U.S. government gave its own citizens. Not to say I'm... I'm disappointed and not surprised. I'm not surprised. It is... It is looking... This is... Ex so, folks, let, 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 let me just explain this now. Look. Sometimes MREs go bad, and again, the, 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 these are things that don't really it's, – it's, this is not what the people want. They want sustainable food. The U.S. gives out old MREs. Old MREs. Children emaciated and malnourished. These were little Yazan's final moments. His tiny fingers gripped in his mother's hand. 
he, like Mila, would not make it. Others are still just barely holding on. But there is no telling how long they will survive. Standing beside Mila's body, Dr. Ahmed Salem says many children at this hospital are now dying due to a lack of food and oxygen supplies. With limited aid getting in, many have grown desperate, searching for food wherever they can. Nine-year-old Muhammad says he walks for about a mile every day to collect water for his family. He seems sad. Why? This ch- yeah. Well, gee, lady, CNN, the correspondent, why do you think he's sad? Why do you, that is, hey, hey, wow, you're in a war zone. Why are you so sad? Of course he's sad. Journalist asks him. <laughs> because of the war, he says. It is all too much. On Tuesday, UN experts accused Israel of intentionally starving the Palestinian people in Gaza. (laughs) Noting that the Israeli military is now targeting both civilians seeking aid and humanitarian convoys. Oh, wow. And and again, the the fact that this is being talked about on CNN is, is actually kind of incredible. Someone trying to silence me? Bill, Bob, listen. You know what the rules are. When I do my show, when I do my show, my NSA handlers, you let me do my show. Do not cut the feed again, Bill and Bob. Much love to you. Much love to you. Hey, listen, folks. I <clears throat> I love living my life. I love living life. Okay? There you go. I'm just, I'm just a saying. Just a saying. All right. Let's go ahead and continue on. Let's rewind that just a little bit. Journalist asks him. Because of the war, he says, it is all too much. On Tuesday, UN experts accused Israel of intentionally starving the Palestinian people in Gaza. (laughs) Noting that the Israeli military is now targeting both civilians seeking aid and humanitarian convoys. Israel has denied targeting civilians and says that there is, quote, no limit to the amount of humanitarian aid for civilians in Gaza. But the reality on the ground paints a very different picture. There is no food, no water, no flour, cooking oil or anything, this woman says. Death is better than this. Now, again, as I said before, before I was wrongly interrupted. This this has happened like this is the third time this week this has happened by the way, where where where, where my feed gets cut. I wonder why. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. <clears throat> Anyways, let's continue on. Uh, what I find interesting is how CNN is constantly, you know, for a long time, or it was constantly upholding a narrative of what's ha- what Israel's doing self defense. Now we're seeing the story get twisted around. And I brought this up on Missy Winston's show as well. How the neoliberal machine of corporate media is starting to crack because you can't you can't deny the information especially now that you have the rise of citizen journalists and independent individuals who are able to think critically and call out corporate media for its hypocrisy hell i mean quite recently and and hey intercept and democracy now i think you guys owe aaron mate and max blumenthal of the gray zone a very sincere apology OK, you should, you should apologize to those two. I mean, you guys are trying to take their work, especially. I mean, to be fair here, because I did see that Jimmy Dore clip, you know, the intercept claiming it did some breaking news, even though they mentioned the gray zone in passing. I mean, who broke it first? The gray zone calling out all the ridiculous stories that were coming out after October 7th. Or was it the intercept? It was the gray zone. Why? Because Aaron Maté and Mac Bloom is all our award winning journalists. There, simple as that. According to a senior UN official, at least a quarter of Gaza's population is now said to be just one step away from famine. With aid agents. And again, I want to be clear the Intercept did, in passing, mention the Gray Zone, but let's be clear here. I mean, come on, the Intercept. Did you intercept the Gray Zone article and say, oh, gee, this seems nice? 
he is facing overwhelming obstacles in getting the bare minimum of supplies into Gaza. And as Israel's ground offensive threatens to push further into the Strip's densely populated south, time is quickly running out. And Nada's joining us now live. Nada, how systemic are these issues of getting aid in? Well, look, Wolf, the extent of the obstruction that we are seeing is troubling. The United Nations says some 40% of aid missions under their coordination were either denied or obstructed by Israel last month. We are still seeing the prolonged closure of border crossings from Israel into Gaza. And we are also still seeing Israeli protesters physically blocking aid trucks from accessing Gaza with little to no intervention from security forces on the ground. Now, we are beginning to hear uh, from international allies of uh, Israel, including the United States, taking a firmer stance when it comes to pressuring Israel to allow for more aid to get into Gaza. The Biden administration has been clear. They've said that there is simply no excuse for more aid not to be allowed in. Yes, but the Biden administration, again, the president of the United States, global superpower. This, this should not come as a surprise that they actually have more push and pull unless they don't want another U.S. liberty incident to happen again, right? Right? Yeah. And we know, according to the Pentagon as well, that the U.S. is considering a maritime corridor. It is reviewing its options there. And of course, we have seen humanitarian aid now being airdropped into Gaza by the U.S. and other international allies. Though that has drawn some criticism from aid agencies who have described this as a temporary measure carried out with little to no consideration for how this aid can be safely and fairly distributed on the ground. Now, of course, the amount of aid actually getting in at this stage is simply not enough. It is a drop in the ocean in comparison to what is actually needed in Gaza. And as you saw in our report there, Gaza is teetering on the brink of an outright famine. Hmm. And who controls what gets in and out? It's Israel. But there is a shift happening, especially when you see people start speaking out. And this is something that isn't getting too much attention, but I thought I'd just share this story with all of you lovely people. Amid the escalating violence in Palestine, the Water Transport Workers Federation of India, which represents nearly 4,000 port workers, have said they will not load and unload weaponized cargo bound for Israel. In a statement, the trade union said, and I'm quoting, we, the port workers, part of labor unions, would always stand against the war and the killing of innocent people like women and children. The recent attack of Israel on Gaza, plunging thousands of Palestinians into immense suffering and loss. Now, they say they do not want to play any role in enabling ships to carry arms to Israel and aggravate the war. They have said, and I'm quoting, our union members have collectively decided to refuse handling all types of weaponized cargoes. Loading and unloading these weapons helps provide organizations with the ability to kill innocent people. Not just that, the trade union has also called for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. The press release was... Hmm. So, aid workers, or not union workers in India, refusing to touch arms and armaments going to Israel. It is a shift. It is it is a turn uh, that we are seeing firsthand, and overall, how people are reacting to the genocide that's taking place here. But now, let's bring up to one of the most disturbing representatives, I know, because let's face it, the United States House of Representatives is filled with all sorts of scummy people. But Representative Chuck Fleshman is a name you should know. He, he he says goodbye Palestine, right? So all those starving kids that you saw, all those people who were losing loved ones, here's what a oh-so-fantastic representative Chuck Fleshman has to say. Why do you support the genocide and all of the war crimes and collective punishment? Are you concerned let about me all make the children? It, let me make it clear. Gaza? Let me make it clear. Israel is our ally, will always be our ally. <laughs> And you know APAC has their hands so far up this guy's ass, okay? I mean, they probably got some maybe blackmail material on this dude because the way he's just presenting himself, he's like, Israel's our ally. Israel's our ally. Oh, man. I mean, this 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 guy this guy is a true brown noser, man. Even if they commit war crimes? They are not guilty of genocide, and I will support Israel forever. So Israel will stay your ally, even though they commit Israel will be my even Even though that's your term. Can you explain? That's your term. Hey, but 
What's the difference between that and AOC? Now, of course, maybe AOC might be a little bit more emotional, but come on, can you not say the word genocide? Bernie, can you not say the word genocide? You feel uncomfortable with that word? You don't want to rock the boat? Don't want to make APAC too angry with you? Let me tell you a statistic. Uh -huh, yeah, please, Israel please. will exist. Oh, the Jewish state will exist. That's not a it statistic. That's, not, that's not a that statistic. Whoa. 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 Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Those are words. Statistics come with graphs and data and numbers. You know? Yeah, like you're supposed to show like a bar graph or a chart or something or a pie chart, something like that. Say that again, sir. Say that again. Say that again. Israeli That's people on October. Okay? Let me tell you a statistic. Uh -huh, yeah, please. Israel will oh, exist. Oh, the Jewish state will exist. That's not a it statistic. Will exist. That's not over. And that is for God absolutely to do nothing to do with yeah. Wait, sir. Was that a word problem? Because, because, okay, maybe you should say, "Hey, I, I, I have a word problem for you guys." Thanks. Tell you a statistic. Uh huh. Yeah. Please. Israel will exist. The Jewish state will exist. That's not a it statistic. Will exist. That's not over, and that is for God I mean, absolutely to do nothing to do with what we're saying. saying. And I will always support Israel. Genocide, sir. I will always support Israel, Israel and you can tell the Palestinians I will I never support them. I am a Palestinian them. myself. And I will tell you, I will never face. support you. Yeah. I will tell you. Wow. Huh? Hey, buddy. Whoa, buddy, <laughs> your genocide's showing. Your and you want my, you, you want, you want my goodbye cousins to die. Palestine. Goodbye, I Palestine. Goodbye, Palestine. Goodbye, Palestine. Goodbye, Palestine. Goodbye, Palestine. Wow, goodbye, Palestine. Jesus Christ. Hey, this, this, this is this is what mental derangement looks like, folks. Madness and insanity. We will support yeah. Israel forever. You, no. so you are comfortable. Oh, so just Israel. FYI, this guy just said goodbye. Always to support yes. Israel. You, okay. So you just said goodbye to Palestine. So you are. By the way, by the way, folks, you know, just, 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 just to maybe, you know, give you guys a little short history lesson. Before Israel became Israel, it was once called Palestine. Ne 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 never forget, never forget that scene from the Indiana Jones movie where, like, you know, India, you know how Indiana Jones is flying his, uh, you know, the airplane like over, over, over the, uh, over the map, and Palestine's there. Just so, so, buddy, are, are you actually saying goodbye to Israel? Just, just asking a question. An inquiring mind wants to know because that's what it used to be called. Goodbye. You are comfortable with the murder of thousands of children. The Jewish people will never you suffer again under under Palestinian terrorism, under Hamas, under Hezbollah. So Israel will be secure forever. Okay. God bless Israel so, forever. Thank so you for taking like Palestine off the earth. Yeah. God yes. bless yes. Israel forever. <laughs> Congress. Congress, folks. That's the salty digital dive. Is he trying to get beachfront property in Gaza? You know what? It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me at this point if a lot of these jagoff politicians are looking to get like some property in Gaza. Because the way the destruction of Gaza is being done, I I have to say, you know, maybe this is just speculation. I could be wrong. I could very well be wrong on this. But the amount of destruction that we are seeing. It, it, it seems impossible for anyone in Gaza to really rebuild. So much destruction took place. I mean, it's going to be a massive campaign of public works if something like that were to take place. But with all the territory that Israel is occupying in Gaza, I don't see them giving it up, and I don't see the United States lifting a finger. So you know what that means, right? More occupied territory, more people displaced. And as the starvation and siege continues on, as more people die, you know, my my mind plays this trick on me occasionally where, like, just the, just the evil nature of humanity just comes to light. And it wouldn't surprise me if we had politicians, you know, potentially humoring the idea of buying land, get that nice beachfront property, you know, more settlements. Say it with me, folks. It could happen. Because our politicians are just that scummy and evil. We, we we are ruled by sociopaths. And the actions of that representative, I'm willing to bet a majority of Congress feels the same way too, both Democratic politicians and Republican politicians. So what I have to say then to a lot of our allies in Congress, like AOC, for example, can you not say the word genocide? Can you not say it? Can you say it? 
what what is truly being done here? Because from that video that I played from Case Study QB, it is abundantly clear that nothing's being done to stop people from starving to death. When you have little kids dying of starvation, when you're seeing families lose loved ones, not only from military strikes and snipers and tank shots and all that other stuff, but now to starvation. So the death toll is going to be reach much higher. Now, the thing is, the numbers that we do know, at least as it stands, it's getting close to 40K. But everyone's saying the number is much higher, and I'm willing to believe that the number is much higher. You can't look me in the face and say, oh, well, it's these are low numbers. No. After, what, 80% of Gaza has been destroyed? So much of the uh, people's livelihoods has been destroyed, and there's no food, water, or medicine coming in? Yeah, the death toll is rising up. And so you have this one representative here, this jag-off politician saying, goodbye, Palestine. You think these politicians care about the people? No. And you think they care about you, the American people? No. That is how they really feel, especially when confronted. My fellow Americans, the lunatics are running the asylum.